Hello and welcome to my channel. Here I am with the second part of the Lady of Shalot. In the first part, uh, we saw the roundabouts of the Lady of Shalot, where, where she lives, what is the landscape looking like, or things like that. So the Lady of Shalot was not the central figure of the first part. We know about the Ireland, about the national scenery, about the lilies, about everything, about the towers, but not about the Lady of Shalot. The first part focuses on the external aspects of the story and gives us the setting, the second part, uh, helps us to look through the world from the eyes of the Lady of Shallow. So now in the second part, we go to the inside of her tower and we see how she is living her life in imprisonment somehow. There she weaves by night and day a magic web with colors gay. Gay colors are happy colors. She has heard the whisper say a curse is on her if she stay or pause to look down to Camelot. So that's why no one had ever seen the Lady of Shallot because if she goes to the window, then she, her, her eyes would move on Camelot and she would see the Camelot and then there would be a curse or spell starting uh, uh, acting on her. She knows not what the curse may be. And so she weaveth steadily because the curse might be a quite intense one. The Lady of Charlotte keeps cautious and she prefers to be safe. In little other care has she, the Lady of Charlotte. So she is all the time weaving by her loom. And this is an image or an imagination of where the Lady of Charlotte lived. And moving through a mirror clear that hangs before her all the year, shadowed, shadows of the world appear. So this is how the Lady of Shallot can see the world, through a mirror. Everything is just its reflection for the Lady of Shallot, not its reality. She always sees the images in a mirror. There she sees the highway near, winding down to Camelot. There the river Edivirus, there are some circles on the surface of water, and there the Sirli village, Cheryl, Sirli means bold somehow, uh, Cheryl's peasants, and the red cloaks of market girls pass onward from Shallot. So these are various images, moving, dynamic world around the Lady of Shallot. The Lady of Shallot is static. She's just there, but everything around him, around her, even the river, is moving and showing some forms of dynamism. And here you can see a foreshadowing of the rest of the story. This is the mirror, of course. And that is what, what you can see in the image is her loom. And there are some other images seen by the Lady of Shallot. Sometimes a troop of damsels, glad. Damsels means girls. An abbot on an ambling pad. Sometimes a ambling pad is, is an easy paced horse. Sometimes a curly shepherd lad or long haired page in crimson clad goes by to towered Camelot. Clad means wearing something in crimson. And sometimes through the mirror blue, the knights come riding two and two. She has no loyal knight and true, the Lady of Shallot. It was customary in the Middle Ages and the, in the court, a courtly tradition that the knights were uh, uh, were loyal to a lady. It was it was not necessarily in form of love, uh, but they show loyalty and honor towards that lady but the lady of shallot doesn't have a knight and this might be a flashing empty spot for her as you have seen some other pictures and images and paintings in the first part of the video that the first part of the po poem in another video uh, and this is the window the mirror and the Lady of Shallot. Maybe she is watching outside, or maybe not. But in the in her web, she's not satisfied. She doesn't have 
um, a night, uh, but but she still engages herself in 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 the routine she has. But in her web, she still delights to weave the mirror's magic size. So what she's weaving is uh, what she what she sees there. Uh, for your information, there are some comparisons made between the Lady of Shalott and Penelope. Odysseus, why? If Odysseus uh, was the central character of Homer's Odyssey, uh, Odysseus was lost after uh, the Trojan War. She could, he could not find the way home. And Penelope had many suitors. Uh, to, uh, to, to, to reject all those suitors and to, uh, to make them keep by, uh, she weaved if she, she kind of making um, a loom or something woven every day and throughout the night she uh, once again uh, did, 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 did just turned uh, th those uh, woven things and then when the suitors told her Penelope when would you answer us she said when my weaving would finish but the weaving would never finish so th this is the story. That's why maybe the, the story, not not, uh, not the last part, but the first part of Penelope's story might be related to the story of the Lady of Shallot. And Penelope uh, was a revived character in, in this period, especially among the Pre-Raphaelites. Pre-Raphaelites uh, were a group of poets, painters, musicians, who, um, who revived uh, some of the classical literature and uh, one of their iconic figures was Penelope. So maybe uh, this revival of the character of Penelope by the Pre-Raphaelite group uh, had inspired uh, the, uh, Tennyson here to write about the Lady of Shallot in this way, uh, or to imagine that Lady of Shallot is weaving all the time. So, but in her web she still delights to weave the mirror's magic sides, for often through the silent nights, a funeral with poems and lights and music, poems of the, the feather uh, uh, I'm on the uh, hood uh, uh, worn by people or uh, on the people's hats, and music went to Camelot. Or when the moon was overhead, came two young lovers, like they wed. And when the Lady of Charlotte sees this image, she says, and this is one of the rare occasions in the poem, we can hear the voice of the Lady of Charlotte, I am half sick of shadows, said the Lady of Charlotte. This part, I am half sick of shadows, is actually the climactic moment of the poem when she makes a decision. The decision uh, would be seen and would be discussed in the next video. Thank you for listening.